has Apple been looking at this for a, over a year yeah. or have they been sort of caught flat footed by the fact that that's 2023's story? Yeah. Right. And, you know, and I think, it, you know, it could play out poorly for Apple if Apple's been planning on 2023 being the year of VR. And in fact, it's the year of AI. You know, it, yeah. it, it could be a rough it could be a rough gear shift for them to catch up. WWDC is coming up. Do you think we will see anything, any big announcements in terms of AI from Apple, either as part of the software or as part of the rumored uh, virtual reality headset? The one area right now, I think it is actually pretty fair to say that the one major IDE, which is the programming environment for programmers or that's xcode for apple developers which is whether you're writing mac software iphone software apple tv software watch software everything if you're writing software for an apple product you do it in xcode xcode is the only major ide right now that doesn't have some sort of chat gpt um you know, microsoft and github call theirs copilot which is a great name right it's a you're the, still the pilot writing the, the computer program and now though you've got an automated assistant copilot who can fill stuff in and everybody i know who's a developer who's used this stuff is blown away by it to some extent or another and that they find it and i'm talking really talented developers not like oh i need help but yes. i mean like some of my friends who who are some of the best developers i know are like this is amazing it and they find the themselves work. just and they're yeah they're, it, it it removes grunt work it is it just makes them faster yeah. and it and it makes it, xcode doesn't have anything like that built in if wwdc comes and passes without any mention of hey and now we've got some kind of copilot like feature for xcode to help you fill this stuff in i think that's a huge swing and a miss because it it's already the last major ide standing without such integration and if WWDC comes and goes, then what are we looking at next year? But I, that to me is one of my bingo card things for this WWDC. Is there something for Xcode and developers in particular based on this? Because it is absolutely, and, it, and it's one of those areas where if anybody wanted to say some kind of skeptic who just wants to be a little, hey, put the brakes on this. This stuff is funny and these images are cool, whatever. But how are anybody using it for work? In the programming world, this is absolutely uh, being used for real work. And there are people who are using other IDs on other platforms who are get using it all day, every day, who I think at this point would say, I don't want to go back. And then the other area would be, and again, we haven't heard anything about it, but it would be amazing if they had breakthroughs for Siri to talk about yes. and say, hey, next fall with these major releases, Siri is going to be so much better in, you know, uh, ways that would take, you know, 20, 25 minutes of the WWDC keynote just to talk about how much smarter Siri is going to be. Even just a sequential and how inference. Have... Like everyone else is so far yeah. ahead in how much it can retain context in a conversation yep. where Siri drops like two or three you know, segments right. in. Right. I mean, we're still talking about being able to set multiple timers for two things you're cooking on your stovetop. And it's like, oh, wow, now you're going to have Joanna Stern timers, is screaming. But... Right. But I mean, you know, it really ought to be able to have, yeah. you know, you don't need a, a HAL 9000 computer just to be able to say, hey, I'm cooking um, two things with two different boiling I'm times. I'm sorry, John. You know? <laughs> the other one where I'm, where I'm hopeful is there are some features that are just so useful. Like, I don't know if you've tried the magic eraser on a Pixel phone where you can just take things out of your photos that shouldn't be there, people yeah. and signs. And there are some systems where you can just paint out, like you have this perfect picture, but it's not framed right and you can't crop in. And with these things, you can actually crop out and it'll figure out what the rest of the photo should be. That just gives you a better photo. And that that sounds very Apple to me, like using these features in a way that will just give you better photos yeah. would make a great demo. I would look for that too, because you know it's a high priority because... All you have to do is look at their ads to tell what do they think sells iPhones and photography is, you know, first, second and third, really. And so features like that, you know, which is sort of, you know, the magic eraser is not a camera. You know, the, sometimes the line gets blurred yes, in computational fair, photography yeah. 
what's photo editing and what's part of the camera. That's part of the photo editing, yes. but people clearly want to do it, yeah. right? It's, you know, and again, the bar's sort of been raised where there are, you know, you know, if, you, if you're using Google Photos, you get these, you know, hey, here's a picture of my two kids at the beach, but there's one guy in yes. the background, you know, just circle him and he's gone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, you know, and again, would they call it AI? I don't know. But, you know. Uh, well, I don't know if they did. Remember when you could hold your finger down on something and would automatically do the segmentation mapping, let you pull it out of the photo? I don't like that is all mach like a machine learning, but I don't know yep. if they called that out specifically. Yeah, I, I don't know if they did or not. And I, you know, I, I still see, I sometimes I see that when I try to drag yes. a photo. And instead of, I want to drag the whole photo and it's like, oh, I better put my finger that in the background. That happens with files. I want to drag a file. All it does is select right. the text because of the AI right. text recognition. Right. right, right. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, just one plea from me to the engineering team is they had this whole thing about natural photos that they wanted to capture exactly what the camera saw so that we could, you know, crush the shadows or boost the sat on ourselves, you know, if we want to for Instagram. But it has just over the years gotten increasingly, increasingly crispy. Like everyone has this slightly uh, Kramer from Seinfeld reddish bake on us now. Yeah. Uh, and I just hope that they dial that. Like it, I know that is a result of a lot of computational photography. And famously, anytime anybody changes a camera system, everything has to be retrained, which is why they're right. reticent to train to change the actual camera hardware specs year after year. But just if we could get back to that, like use the awesome power of artificialness to get us more natural, ironically. Yeah. I would say for iWork as well, that I just, like it, it's not like Xcode feels like a must have and iWork feels like a nice to have. Well, but iWork, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't make WWDC yeah. because it's not tied to the OS schedule. Yeah. It depends whether they just want to make a statement like, hey, we're here and we get it, yes. you know, that, that, uh, that these... AI driven features are sort of becoming the state of the art for office software. Um, so yeah, that is another good one. And to your point, um, not directly related to WWDC, but Final Cut compared to like the level of AI in Final Cut, there is some, like it'll do the noise suppression. It'll take a horizontal video and try to intelligently turn it into a vertical video for you. But when you see what Adobe and what DaVinci Resolve have been announcing, they have mind boggling, like, I think one of them is just like, right. find me all the B-roll for the segment. Adobe podcast is turning garbage audio into like, it is going to save so many recordings. There's just so many interesting <laughs> things there, not dependent on, again, on the WWDC schedule, but things that I think are going right. to be in increasingly table stakes competitively. Right. And I guess that gets to the other, uh, the other reason Apple can move slowly over the decades and still sort of, you know, be, you know, I think they're still somewhat successful as a company is by being the platform maker yeah. who sells hardware people do stuff they can say you know you can say hey adobe's you know adobe premiere just uh, uh, unveiled all of these amazing ai driven uh editing features you know where yeah. you can find b-roll and dynamically and change the apparently lighting. Uh, apparently you can like put a rough cut together yeah. and stuff like that um and they, they could say, Apple can look you right in the eye and say, well, that's great because the best place to run Adobe Premiere is on a new, you know, uh, yeah. Mac Studio or, yep. or whatever it is they Same want to show. Evolve, yeah. And so and so it's really, you know, the only game in town. And again, it's just, it's just sort of, to me, the sort of canary in the coal mine for has Apple been looking at this for a, over a year yeah. or have they been sort of caught flat footed by the fact that that's 2023's story, yeah. right? And you know, and I think, it, you know, it could play out poorly for Apple if Apple's been planning on 2023 being the year of VR. Yes. And in fact, it's the year of AI. You know, it, yeah. it, it could be a rough it could be a rough gear shift for them to catch up. Yeah, I totally feel this because generative AI prompts art. All of this is moving so fast that one of the ways I'm keeping up is going back to the basics, the fundamentals with neural networking the course on brilliant.org, today's sponsor, because Brilliant makes college level courses available to you, to me, to everyone. And it's the absolute most intuitive, engaging way to learn AI and computer science and math and physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and more in a visual hands-on way, all designed for high velocity learning to help us stay focused and reach our goals fast. It's almost like a game with these helpful explanations along the way, so you're never left guessing, just learning. 
and Brilliant has thousands of lessons with more added monthly. And you can try everything, everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just visit brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel. And so does checking out this video for more on how the latest phase of AI is changing the world almost by the day. Give it a watch and I'll see you in the next video.